What's up, y'all? It's your boy Chris here, your one and only data bunny. And in today's quick video, I'm just going to be going over my lab. Uh, this is more of my physical Cisco lab, and it's a mixture, right? We have 40 gates, we have 40 switches in there, we have uh, then we have the Cisco routers and the Cisco switches. But um, I pretty much am going to go over how I constructed the lab and what I'm actually using uh, as far as the equipment goes, right? What routers am I using? What forty gates am I using? What switches are I, you know, I'm using? And uh, we're just gonna go over the rundown of the quick physical lab, and then after that, I will show you guys exactly how I constructed the actual uh, diagram. It was an early aspect of it, so it'll be cool to show you guys that, and uh, just give you a quick rundown of what I had in mind when I was constructing the uh, the lab. So let's go right to it. All right, y'all. So this is the lab so go here gives you just a quick overview of it now it looks crazy right so i had a bunch of stuff on this table that i i finally was able to put in a rack and i can clean this entire table up but here is where the magic happens uh, and what's cool is it can communicate with my gns3 setup which I'll go to go through in a different video, but we have the main core part of the network. This is the network that I run and I am running on right now as we speak. My Wi-Fi, everything is coming through here, which is the neck gear, and then it's going to the Forda switch. And that Forda switch through Forda link is going to the Forda gate. VLANs, assignments, all of that is through the Forda gate and it sends and routes things out to the internet through the uh, Xfinity ISP over there. So some people are maybe asking, why not just use Cisco APs or why not use 40 APs? A, I didn't have 40 APs at the time of doing this network. Um, second, Cisco APs, I'd rather just use that in the lab and not like my actual uh, network that runs 24 seven. This is all that runs 24 seven. This Forda switch, this Forda gate, this Netgear wireless router and that ISP uh, WAN box. So in the other room, I actually have a Forda switch there as well. You can call it like an IDF, which I used to uh, hardwire other things in my bedroom. So here is the core distro section of the lab. You can call this the collapsed core design. So we have the two Cisco Nexus. And these are the Cisco Nexus 3048TP. Where I get these from, I got these from eBay. You can find them a lot on eBay. Um, reasonable price, it was $75 each. So I had uh, $75 for each for each Cisco Nexus. Really good deal. Turned them on, they work great. Uh, every port seems to be working on them. Uh, I have SSH running on them. I have a VPC. So they're actually seen as like one chassis and how I got that functioning. So I have the actual uh, VRF management ports. They are connecting. You can see the wires here. They are connecting back to the Forda switches, this Forda switch here. And I can access them through their IP addresses, which will give me the management access to manage them in the other room. Uh, then we also have the Keep Alive links. This is what's uh, allowing the two of the Nexus know who's alive and whatnot. And uh, um, here, these actually, these two links here, see these two links? This is a trunk, a port channel, a trunk from the, that I've configured on the gate to the Forda switch. And they are going down to the Cisco Nexus uh, VPC. So we got one going to Nexus 1 and the other one going to Nexus 2. And it creates that port channel link. So I can see both of them on my Forda gate. And then we have like the wireless LAN controller. I have to get a console cable for this wireless LAN controller. Uh, so I haven't even console into it yet or anything. So it's just, it's just loose right now. It's just in, but I really can't. I really haven't done anything to it yet. No configurations or anything. But we have this, um, 
within this lab, we have a stack. So a switch stack. So these three switches, these are Cisco Catalyst 3750s, uh, PoE 48 ports. These were, these were graphed from the University of Chicago uh, when we were doing a network refresh. Um, they were pretty much decommissioning these types. They kept the X series, but these, they actually uh, were just giving them away. So I went ahead and signed, you know, signed some paperwork and they released them out to me. So it was great to do that. And this is why I say, when you're working at these past network jobs, don't be afraid to ask for equipment. Cause a lot of times they're gonna be giving out that equipment and that's just free stuff. So these switches, I don't know, I don't know how much they cost, but you probably go on eBay and, pr and try to tally up how much each one costs. If you're trying to get three, definitely go on eBay and see. But uh, I got these pretty much for free uh, for just working, being a network technician at the time. So in the wireless LAN controller, if no one knows the 4400 series, so that's that. And then we go down, right? So focusing on these, uh, these uh, catalyst switches, just want to add that I have a loop design, which I haven't configured yet, but these would be in the port channel that goes to this switch stack. So if you don't see here, here are the stacking cables. These stacking cables I also was able to grab from the University of Chicago as well, and they were able to release them to me. So they're all stacked as one chassis. And from Nexus 1 down to this first switch, it sees the stack. Nexus 2 down to the last switch, it sees the stack. This is for redundancy. Um, if this switch dies and we didn't have this link, we would have lost all the links to the rest of the, of the switch stack. However, because we have this second link here on this VPC, if this switch was to die, we still have network connectivity and can still see everything upward. Now you may be saying, but how we see everything upward if this cable no longer there, you know, or like, let's say like the, let's say the Nexus dies. Well, again, they're all connected from these switch stacks cables. So technically they, they are still connected. So if this Nexus goes down, I can still access everything from the second Nexus. And all of that is again, going back up to the Forda switch, which through Forda link is connected to the Fortigate 70F. This Fortigate 70F was uh, given to me by my past job as a network engineer, get certified and certain amount of cert certificates for Fortinet. Fortinet sends out, you know, a free Fortigate. That's how I got that. Utilize your resources and past jobs, man. Like you really do that. However, this Ford switch I actually bought uh, on Amazon. This was an actual new Ford switch. This is the the uh, Ford switch 124E. So that's that. This Negear's wireless rod I had for a while, for 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 a long time. So working our way down, all this other stuff haven't really been thought of yet. But technically. I can simulate other WANs or other networks. So it goes to a router. This is a Cisco 1921 router. And I also have like an ASA here. This ASA is a, see if you can read that. An ASA 5512. The firepower module is not in, but I could probably get that too. Find that somewhere for good price. Um, one of the issues right now with this ASA is the image. I have to get the image to actually save on the actual device. Uh, there was a past issue with where somehow the image just didn't, I don't know, it just disappeared. So I'm gonna have to work with that and do some research on it. Right now I kind of don't need it, but uh, it would be pretty cool to get the ASA back up and running. It was working, um, man, like months ago and for some reason it just stopped working. So again, right? I may have to get a new ASA if I have to, or just buy a completely different model. But um, again, eBay, 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 eBay. These switches, these switches, these are the the uh, 2960 plus POE. These also came from eBay. Um, 
This was a simulated another network, right? And we have this FortiGate 60D, no license on it, but it still does like all of the routing functions. Uh, it does all of the uh, policies, you know, this is one advantage of having the physical 40 gates instead of the the uh, licensed use images for GNS3 because they're not limited to the amount of policies you can put on them. So this is why I like getting the physical gear of the 40 gates because they don't really limit you. If you only just have, you know, just a licensing issue, but I don't really worry about that because I already have like an actual new 40 gate here that actually has licenses and all of that. Um, but yeah, I can pretty much simulate, let's say, uh, let's say, you know, another network comes down here. I can simulate BGP if I wanted to. BGP could be here on this router. I have BGP already running on my actual FortiGate, you know, being able to see all that if I want to. Uh, I can also create other networks that can go through other networks and say I want to create a staging environment where I could do like certain network automation tasks where I can plug things in. This FortiGate sends a DHCP uh, lease to anything that is plugged into these switches. Boom, boom, boom. It gets it. The network sees it. And then it goes all the way back up to this FortiGate. This FortiGate sees it through the Nexus. You know, you can do a whole bunch of stuff, man. <laughs> you can do a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, we got that. And this is another. Uh, before I jump around, this right here is a Cisco 1841 router this router is just a, it's a fast ethernet so it's only 100 megs uh i could put modules in it if i wanted to but uh, it's just 100 megs these 1921s however are actual uh gig one gig ports so that's the only difference this this router this uh 1841 router i actually got from my very first it job um, as I was revamping the entire network there, there was equipment that was just sitting there doing nothing. This entire router was just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. I verified if I could take it home, boom. And that's what's the story with that. Uh, the same with, uh, so these switches were bought, man. I think like 2019, 2018, I think 2019, um, when I was just getting into it and I was figuring out what I wanted to do and I started getting more interested in networking. These were the very first two switches that I ever bought for anything network related. How did I come about knowing about these? Well, my past job, uh, I saw these and I was like, oh man, these are Cisco switches. But you know, this was when I was during the time when I was taking the classes, the cabling class, and we were we haven't even touched the, the switches in the classes yet. But I saw them there racked and uh, you know, stacked there, but I just never touched them at the time ebay picked these up didn't know anything about configuring switches that's how i started learning about switches just on these two switches alone and then that's when i went ahead and got the uh you know more switches and then the cisco routers actually here's another 1921 same story ebay and the rest of this stuff is ebay this for this fortigate 240d this is a nice fortigate man and this is actually a really nice fortigate the dmz port was actually uh, damaged, damaged at the time, but uh, I went ahead and actually fixed it. Kind of like pushed, you know, pushed it in, got it up and running. And then we have the 40 gate 1000 C. This was also eBay for not a bad price at all. Uh, I think it was like 200 or something like that. Maybe less than, I think it was like 180 something. But um, again, what's cool about these is they actually has a uh, 10 gig uplinks ports on them so this is a really really fast uh well at the time right we got like 40 gigs and stuff now uh with the qf uh q uh sfp modules those are like the 40 gigs and whatnot these don't have that but you get the gist right this is just the lab and then we have like the 48 p's which i will actually connect to the switch stack here when once the wireless land controller it's up and running and the Nexus sees it. The Nexus then sees the the APs on the, the switch stacks. Boom. The, then the wireless LAN controller sees it. And this sends it out to the network here. Broadcast. Whatever it needs to broadcast. Boom. So uh, that is that is it. 
this is the lab. This is the lab here. So it's a lot, a lot going on, right? It's a lot you can do with this lab. Now, is it specifically for CCMP? No, nah, it's just whenever I want to test something out or do something, I can always come here. And what's cool is I have GNS3 running. Once everything is connected and the routes are in place, you know, make sure things are reaching each other, reaching the gate and whatnot. As long as the gate sees what it sees here, I will be able to ping everything in GNS3 as well and back and forth. So this is the lab. So, all right, so one thing I just want to explain here is that not all the equipment was, you know, grabbed all at once. It took, it took some years to add all this up. Yeah, so people would ask like, oh, well, how much did it cost? Well, I can't really tell you because it's been over the years. But I will say that um, take advantage of past jobs. If they are upgrading equipment, take advantage of that. Two, take advantage of eBay, find some good deals. Make sure you do your research and reviews on the equipment. And then, you know, hope for the best. Make sure they come in good and good you know, standards, make sure they come in good condition. If not, you can always return them. So make sure you do have that ability to return equipment. Um, so those are the two things, eBay and past jobs. All right, y'all. So this is the design aspect of, uh, you know, what I had in mind when I created the lab. You can see not everything is there, but um, not everything is perfectly correct how it was. But we can see the 40 gates, the Nexus switches, we can see the wireless LAN controller and the switch stack. And it was working down from there. We got the subnets here. We have the staging switch. And if we look through the home network diagram, this is more of like the, uh, I guess you could still call it a logical diagram. Uh, but again, as the VLANs here, but we also have the, the actual uh, blocks, network blocks. So we got the internet edge. The internet edge is where I'm getting the internet from, which is of course that 40 gate. And then we also have the staging environment. We have a network service block. We also have the data center block, which the data center block is actually where my GNS3 is running in. And the data center block is, is this machine here. So this machine is gonna be running VMs. Uh, we got uh, Red Hat virtual machines. We got Ubuntu virtual machines, uh, OpenSUSE. We have uh, GNS3 running. I could probably, I most likely could run a DHCP server on it if I wanted to. TFTP server is already running on it. Uh, we got, you know, a whole bunch of VMs. So let's make sure that my equipment can see that stuff, right? My lab can see that stuff and can go out. And of course, it's all happening because of this core, this, co this core distro layer. This entire layer here is where the uh, Cisco Nexus are pretty much putting everything together. It's that neck, it's that modular network design. So you can add, and I can keep attaching more blocks on here if I wanted to. So if I wanted to create another block and allocate it towards something, you know, i create it and then attach it to the ne Nexus. And again, you know, it's less disruption. It's just, you know where to put everything in your network. At the access layer, right? Boom, where is it going? To the Nexus. Uh, this is that modular network design that works really well uh, when you put it all together. So, yeah, so this is um, I love the design stuff of this. Like, I love doing stuff like this uh, and then making it actually physically put it together and actually get it to work like this stuff is really cool. So I will definitely start working on the rest of this stuff later. But as you can see, I'm also studying for the CCMP and I have a bunch of networking automation books and uh, things like that. So trying to allocate as enough, enough time as I can, so. All right, y'all, so that is the video for today. You know, just going over a brief discussion of my lab, what I have set up, what did I do to grab those equipment? What did I do? Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, and share. And yeah, man, i just updating you all on my journey, network engineering, network automation and development you know, let's see what happens. Let's, let's, let's get it.